how's it going? So today we wanted to give you an update on our true drop containers that we have planted here along our fence line. And this has been such a fun project to watch unfold because if you watched our initial video, you might remember that Aaron and I are kind of doing a plant competition. There are 14 containers here. Aaron planned and planted seven of them and I did the other seven and they're all different, which at first I didn't know if I would love that to see all, you know, a whole bunch of different colors along this fence line. I kind of tend to want to do everything the same. So it's one big striking effect, but I actually think that this has been a little bit more uh, striking than doing them all the same. Um, so we just wanted to walk through and show you what they all look like. This is the first container. Let me show you what it looked like in the beginning. And here's what it looks like now. Now this one is my container and they're every other. So my containers first, the next one will be Aaron's and then so forth. Um, this one, I planted three Toucan Scarlet Cannas in here. Look at this, about ready to bloom. If you look back here, you can see what the blooms look like. This was the biggest stretch for me in terms of color because I used red, which for those of you who have watched our videos for a while, you know that I don't use red very often. Um, Benjamin's also here with us for this video playing with his airplane. Um, anyway, I just thought, you know, with Aaron and I doing a competition, I just figured he would use a bunch of really warm colors. And so I just decided to do something completely different and up my game a little bit. And I've really enjoyed it. You can see the mix of colors really well, especially on this side of the container. We've got Super Bell's Tangerine Punch, Super Tunia Honey, and Super Bina Scarlet Star. And I'm really happy with the way they all look. I actually like the red down here on the very end because it shows up so well. So let's head to the next container. So this is Aaron's container. This is the before, and this is what it looks like after. And he designed this one without a centerpiece, which this has been really interesting. It's actually very beautiful because you can see so many more flowers without the interruption of having a centerpiece in the center. There is a Blushing Princess Sweet Alyssum here, Lobularia that has just incorporated beautifully with the other plants. There's Supertunia uh, trailing rose vein, mini rose, min rose vein, uh, but I love it. It's a little bit of a smaller flower on the Supertunia side of things, but I love, it looks like a mini Bordeaux with a little bit more of a pink hue. And then there's Supertunia royal magenta. So here's what this container looked like in the beginning. And then here's what it looks like today. And this one has had a little bit of a struggle because I didn't realize <laughs> that the drip tubing was actually pinched. We actually ran drip tube into the self-watering reservoirs so that we could turn on, and I'll explain it when we get closer to the hose, so we could turn it on and they would all fill up at this very same time and we wouldn't have to drag a hose around. Um, but that drip tubing was pinched and so this one went without water for a while. And so it is struggling a little bit. The Super Bina Large Lilac Blue, see some flowers over here, beautiful color. But they, I think that one was the most effective of all the plants. There's another Supertunia trailing rose veined, Supertunia royal velvet. So this is the delightful lively lavender. I think that's the name of it. If that's wrong, we'll put it up on the screen. Um, but these dahlias, there's three of them in the center, beautiful color. I love them along with the other three plants in here. They just went through a huge flush of blooms. I came out and removed most of the spent blooms and there are a ton of buds all over them. So I think this one just kind of flushes in and out of color throughout the season. And it could be because it struggled with that water there for a little while. Um, that's why they're kind of out of color at this point. But we'll give you more updates as the season goes and hopefully this one rebounds. We did fertilize it and fix the water to it. So let's head to the next one. All right, this one's Aaron's. Here's the before. And here's what it looks like today. Now this one has um, suffered some hail damage when we had that big storm come through. So the poor leaves you can see, I mean, they just got nailed, just tattered. Um, I did cut some of them off just because they were like flopped over on top of the lemon coral, um, but they're putting on new growth. You can see right here, they're coming out the center. There's a new leaf coming here. Um, and so I do think it'll rebound. Now, Aaron only used one canna in the center here. Look. You see it? It's a helicopter, baby. Bye-bye. So yeah, he only used the one canna in the center, which it may by the end of the season fill in and do wonderful, but he's had to come out here and cut the lemon coral away from the center because this is such a vigorous plant. I mean, look at how much it's filled in. It's starting to kind of go over the sides here and you can see that when it gets a lot of sun, it does turn that kind of lemony color, but you know, 
it's really fun just to kind of see this striking contrast in foliage color. So it's been a really interesting one. This is actually Benjamin's favorite because he loves the canna. He'll come up and just do this to the canna. <laughs> Pretty cute. So on the next one, here's what it looked like before. And then this is what it looks like today. And I've been really thrilled with the growth of this one overall. I've got plain the blue salvia in the center. I used three of those. Not only are the blooms amazing because even when it's out of bloom, the calyx that holds the petals in place still has really beautiful color. So you don't feel the need to deadhead this one ever, which is awesome. But I love the foliage. I love that kind of soft sagey green and it almost has a velvety appearance. So pretty. And then there's Supertunia Limoncello, Supertunia Bermuda Beach. Now I can't remember if this is Snow Princess or White Knight Lobularia. We'll put it up on the screen, but it's doing great. Now the, the Bermuda Beach Supertunia is definitely not keeping up in terms of vigor. I may have done better with like a Vista bubblegum in this situation. I may have had a little bit more pink, but I really like the whole blend of color here. This one is Aaron's and I actually really like, this is one of my favorite ones that he did. So here's what it looked like before. And then this is what it looks like today. In the center, he used an orange blaze uh, nofofia or red hot poker, uh, which he has recently come out and did some deadheading, uh, but it usually has these big spiky bright orange blooms on it. But even when it's not in bloom, and this is the beauty of this plant, it still is a beautiful spiky grass centerpiece. So you don't really necessarily need those blooms in here. There's a sweet Caroline sweetheart red um, sweet potato vine right here. So a nice little weighty color there. Supertunia honey, which morphs. I mean, this is all the same plant. Look at that. All of those really pretty warm colors. And this one will go right into fall with no problem. Superbell's tangerine punch. And I think that's pretty much the mix here. But everything's doing really well. Now there is a tiny bit of budworm damage on some of our supertunias. Um, we have sprayed uh, BT on them and it's something that we normally have to do every single May and June to keep on top of that. Um, in fact, I do need to come through and spray one more round probably in the next couple of days to make sure we don't have any consistent damage. And usually it shows up as like little holes eaten through the buds of your plant. So we've done a video about it before. We'll link it down below. Before we move on though, I did want to show you our water setup because it's different than most other years. We put a, a Y on here so that we could hook a hose up but we really don't need it out here anymore because we adapted this one to half inch drip tube, which this is just a plain black poly tubing with no holes in it. Um, we came down here and put a T in and then ran black poly in a trench right behind all of the rows of pots here. And then when we got to each pot, we would tap in with quarter inch black drip tubing and then we ran it up into the reservoir, like up over the side of the pot into the hole that fills the reservoir. So all we have to do is come out here and turn the hose on set our timer for 10 or 15 minutes and then come back and turn the hose back off. So that's all it takes to water these, which is awesome. And we do that about once a week. And then we also fertilize once a week. And that's all the maintenance other than a little bit of deadheading that we've been doing. So here's what this container looked like in the beginning. And then here's what it looks like today. I love this one. This I used a topiary form with a lemon appeal thumbergia or black eyed Susan vine right here in the center. Now we had a really cool, unusually wet spring and it took a while for this one to start taking off as it did for many of our annual grasses because they really thrive with a lot of heat, but it's just starting to put on. I mean, you can see this growth up here at the top here, but the other fun thing and that's something I didn't really think about is that it's actually growing down as well and becoming a spiller as well as a thriller, which it's really fun to see that bright yellow popping through. We've got the luscious berry blend lantana right here, really tropical kind of vibe, super tunia royal magenta, and then super bell's grape punch. So on this next one, this is Aaron's. Here's what it looked like in the beginning. And then this is what it looks like today. Isn't that amazing? Amazing growth on this one. And he used three Prince Tut grasses in the center, which I'm really proud of him for doing. It looks so full and lush. Uh, Super Tunia Bordeaux, which is one of my favorites, uh, alternated with the Sweet Caroline Lime Green. And I think that's a really beautiful, beautiful um, contrast of foliage and bloom color. So here's the before for this one. And then this is what it looks like today. And I'm really thrilled with this one. It's so cheerful and bright. This is a toucan yellow uh, canna. I used three of them as a centerpiece and look at how bright and beautiful those blooms are. And there's five or six more buds coming up all the way around, like really uniformly. So I think in like the next week or so, it's gonna be a gorgeous show of canna blooms. But these plants below are gorgeous. This is a sweet Caroline lime green, sweet potato vine. I just did one of those in the front. Um, and then we've got Superbina whiteout, which is an amazing plant. I love how clear white that is without any yellow. Um, it's just very, very bright. 
which is a gorgeous contrast to our Super Bell's lemon slice, which this is always a favorite. It's so striking and so bright. Um, so I just kind of alternated with those. And then there is some diamond frost euphoria in here, which is just kind of a little accent plant, which, you know, hindsight, I probably didn't need it in this container because you're not really walking up close to these. It's more you're driving by, so you don't really see like really little detail like that. Like it looks gorgeous right here, but you know, probably wouldn't use it again in this particular situation. This one's Aaron's, another one without a centerpiece. Here's what it looked like in the beginning and look at it today. It's just amazing. Now there are three different kinds of plants in here. We've got Superbina Stormburst, which is gorgeous. You've got kind of those really beautiful lavender flowers um, with white margins. And then there's Supertunia Lovey Dovey. Um, I think this is a beautiful blend together. Now there is the Angel Face Cascade Blue uh, Angelonia in here, which was probably a little bit unnecessary. Now that we've planted these together, you can tell that they're not keeping up bigger wise with the other two plants. I mean, you can see it here and there just very lightly, but you know, you never know what's gonna happen throughout the season now that we're getting really consistent heat um, and not as much rain. Maybe uh, it'll catch up, you never know. So on this one, here's what it looked like in the beginning. And then here is what it looks like now. So we've got a skyrocket penicetum in the center, which is now just starting to put on lots of growth. Supertunia lemoncello, superbina peachy keen. And there is some Goldilocks creeping Jenny in there, which this is another one that was probably unnecessary because it's not keeping up with the vigor of everything else. There's also Superbell's tropical sunrise in here. You can see it on this side. <laughs> And you can see a little bit more of the Goldilocks too. Now one could come out here and do some trimming on your Supertunias and Superbinas and kind of keep them a little bit more controlled so everything else has a chance to kind of compete. Um, I don't really want to have that kind of maintenance on these containers. So this is a really good learning experience for me to see what works well together. Sometimes you're surprised by something and how well they keep up with each other. And sometimes you learn like, you know, I probably won't pair these two plants together again or, you know, that sort of thing. And that's kind of the fun for me in gardening is just experimenting and seeing what sticks. And this next one of Aaron's is really interesting. Here's what it looked like before. And this is what it looks like today. Isn't it amazing? So we planted in blocks. There were three pure white butterfly marguerite daisies, which have just recently like boomed. Once we got really consistent heat, it just, I mean, I, it was amazing to watch this thing grow. And you can see all of the flowers and all the buds that it has. Now this one does not have to be deadheaded as most of the plants that we used, other than like the cannas, um, most of them don't have to be deadheaded. In fact, you don't have to deadhead the cannas either in order for them to keep reblooming. And that's a wonderful thing about all of these plants. These do what we call burying their dead. So what they do is the plant grows to a certain point and then it blooms. And then after those blooms are starting to fade, it kind of puts on more growth and blooms again, kind of on top of the old blooms so you don't see them. And you can see that right here. See the old bloom, how it's kind of buried in there. You don't even see it. And so that's what this one does. I mean, if you had to deadhead this, it would be a total maintenance nightmare. I mean, there's so many blooms on it. And so it's so nice that you don't have to. Up front, there are three Sweet Caroline Green with en Bewitched Green with Envy Sweet Potato Vines, which is a total mouthful of a name. Um, and Aaron was kind of questioning whether or not three was too many in here, but I think they filled in and they look great. Super Bell's Yellow. So it's just a really interesting planting concept for this one. This one is mine. Here's what it looked like in the beginning. And then here's what it looks like now. There's not an enormous amount of change. This one gets a little bit more shade than the rest. Um, so I tried something different. I did a clematis. This is a brother Stefan. It's being totally eaten alive by something right now. Look at this. I, I need to get out here and do something. I need to bait. I need to figure out what's going on. I know we've been dealing with earwigs, but I'm not sure that those would actually climb up and eat the blooms. So I just need to do some investigating on this to see what's going on. But you can see how many blooms it did have. It had this like few weeks where it was just in its full glory and it was just gorgeous. Um, but it's growing. The leaves are healthy. We've got dipped in wine coleus down below, which is just now starting to put on a little bit more growth. Again, we are dealing with, I think, earwigs and, and a little bit of hail damage. Um, so anything that has this boulder leaf suffered a little bit of that damage when the, st uh, the storm came through. We've got Goldilocks Creeping Jenny and Diamond Frost Euphorbia. And this last container is Aaron's and he was just about ready to come out here with a white flag the other day and put it in the pot. Um, but I came out with my pruners and I cleaned it up. Now this one has had, 
it's like been through the ringer. So first of all, we had the hailstorm and it just tore up our hostas all over this whole property and the whole thing was just battered. Um, so I got rid of all that foliage, but then shortly after that hailstorm, we have a huge mulberry tree right above us a branch that had, I don't know, like a diameter of 10 to 12 inches, huge branch, it looked like a small tree, fell out of the tree. It fell kind of over here, but this had some small branches that fell all over the top of it. Then we had the um, guys come to clean up the branch and then to do some pruning in this tree. And of course it got a little bit more damage from that. I think it will do okay though. I noticed when I was pruning that there were earwigs running around in here. Um, so I baited for those. I put more slow release fertilizer in here. And then with the prune job, I think it'll just take some time, but it should rebound. Um, so this one will just be an interesting one to see progression. I know that a lot of us deal with stuff like this. It just happens. You know, not always do we have perfect looking everything in our garden. Um, so anyway, I thought it might be encouraging for you guys to see this to know that we deal with stuff like this just like some of you guys do and you just have to roll with it it's part of gardening and the plants are this is coast to coast hosta and i don't even think here's the before let's show you that what it looked like in the beginning and then of course what it looks like today so coast to coast hosta this is a, a wild berry hookah which looks great still it's got a bloom stalk that looks really pretty and then a diamond frost euphorbia which this will actually do a little bit better i think now that the tree has been so heavily pruned up above it. It's not getting near the shade that it did before. So I think that diamond frost will eventually fill in this whole front area. So anyway, you guys, that is the update on our True Drop containers. I hope you enjoyed seeing them kind of mid-July, seeing what they look like. We're gonna go ahead and throw pictures of each one of them up on the screen with a number. And we would love to know your guys' top three, which, which three are your favorites. Just leave it in the comment section down below and we will be updating you later on as they grow and as the season progresses. So we will see you in the next video, bye.